Hey, Brian here from the Cabinet Joint. Um, we are doing more and more what we call custom species. There are odd species that are anything other than cherry, red oak, standard red oak, um, maple, or painted. Um, so when we get into things like quarter sawn or rift sawn, which is what this job is, or we get into pine or red birch or um, walnut, we have to do end skins on our finished ends because we do not stock plywoods in those odd species. So we happen to have a quarter sawn or it might, it might be a rift sawn red oak job going through, or I'm sorry, white oak job going through our shop right now. And I wanted to use this as an opportunity to show you how to actually apply these end skins because we do not do it here in the shop. And if you buy the cabinets from us and have them shipped directly to you, the skins are not applied, they come loose. And the way they are applied is after the cabinet box is built, like I have here, you'll then apply the end skin in the field. That is not something we or our vendor do for you. So this is a, a task you're going to have to, to learn how to do. It's not hard. A lot of people ask questions about it. It's not very difficult. What you're going to need is, of course, the pre-cut end skin. These come sized already to go on the side of the cabinet that they are part of. So we have our end skin, and then we also have this high strength 90. It's available at Lowe's or Home Depot in the glues and adhesive section. Just comes in these cans. I think it's about $13 or $14. Uh, might be a little more now with uh, the post-COVID inflation, but um, one can should do three, four end skins. If you have a big refrigerator or a utility cabinet, you might want to buy a couple of these cans. They go a long way and it's not, it doesn't spray out, as you'll see in a second, it doesn't spray out like spray paint. It comes out really viscous, um, easy to control the spray because it's so thick and gummy. It's like a, it's almost like countertop adhesive. So you're gonna want a can or two of that, some blue tape to protect the front frame so it doesn't get glue on it in case you do get some overspray. And then you're probably wondering why we have a sander. I'll explain that in a moment. So let me get started by laying the cabinet down the way I like to do it is lay the cabinet down so that I can pull that leading edge as tight as I can get it into the front frame using my body as a brace. So the first thing I'm gonna do is tape off my front frame for the glue. Oops, sorry, I do have a hinge issue. I want the hinge on this particular cabinet. I want the hinge on the finished end side. So I'm just gonna run some tape down the side to protect this. And you'll peel this off afterwards, obviously. And now what we do is we grab our stay put, or they call it um, high strength 90. Kind of give the can a shake. And what we're gonna do is coat both sides, uh, I should say each side, this side and the back of this, both get coated. And then we wait four minutes. And you wanna make sure you have the spray right up along the edges is the most important because that's where it's gonna wanna peel off. Let's get that out of the way. Make sure you shake it up. You can see how that's coming out. Really thick and it almost dries in the air. And now we're just gonna coat the rest of that panel. Make sure you got a good amount on there. Do the same thing here. Okay, I'm gonna wait for that to set up. Just make sure I got good coverage on that edge. I'm gonna wait for that to set up, but one thing I wanted to comment on with the sander was when I go to pull this panel in tight to the frame, there is a chance that you may have a little bit of a belly to the frame if you didn't get it strapped tight to the box, and it doesn't take much to be off, just a 16th of an inch, and you're gonna get a gap here or here. It might hit here and here, and you got a gap in the middle. We'll use the belt sander to just take that high spot off on the edge of that panel and get it to match up to the back of the frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and wait four minutes for my glues to set up and then we'll show you how to actually apply this and press it into place. Okay, so we've got our panel glued. We waited our four minutes. I do have a little bit of an edge I kissed here, so I want it with a sander. I wanna make sure I get that properly oriented. Gonna make sure I have it lined up at the end. And what I'm gonna do is use my body to pull this panel as tight as I can get it and then lay it down in place. And now we can use our palm to press everything out. And you wanna make sure you press it with all your body weight you can muster. Some people use a J-roller, that's fine, but you wanna make sure you use a lot of weight to make sure you have no bubbles, especially around the edges. If you have any extra glue squeeze out, you can use like um, 
naphtha, which is basically lighter fluid or some very low grade solvent to wipe any glue off. I don't have any here, but just a little bit of glue might squeeze out or you might've gotten some overspray. You can, you can get that off pretty easy. Set that cabinet off to the side and now I have a flush end basically. Frame is pretty much flush with the side of the cabinet just as a standard cabinet would come with a flush end. So remember, any custom color, any custom wood is all gonna come with skins and we have no other option for you. You'll have to apply them in the field. Hope this helped. Give your cabinet coach a call with any questions. Thanks.